Heads and tails, yin and yang, dark and light. Cliché? Well, you'd be hard pressed to find anything that isn't nowadays. Point is, everyone has their opposite side of the coin. And for years, Mike Garcia was Joy's other side. High school sweethearts who would eventually marry shortly after Joy graduated college. But college was never for him, though, much preferring to work with his hands like his father and his grandfather before him. Nature always felt more like home than any building he slept in, and that continued through his entire life. Joy and he had a happy marriage, rarely fought, and when they did, it always ended that same night. Never go to bed angry with each other. That was his personal motto. But time has a way with people. Things change, your goals in life change. Even who you are at your core can shift and change. Sometimes the slightest shift can create an impassable ravine. Much like nature itself, Mike would muse. He never speaks of the details, the hows and whys of their relationships end. And he never speaks of her poorly, but thinks of her often, especially after the world fell. But being a few towns over and with communications down, Mike still thinks of joy. Not the thoughts he used to have, not of her life and her happiness and her job anymore, wishing her the best, but instead hoping that out there, Joy is still alive. Meet Mike Garcia, Joy Garcia's long-forgotten ex-husband. Somewhere not quite near where Joy lived, lives our dear Mike, in a part of the map that I've never played in before, which is why I chose it, Rosewood. Now, Mike here is something of a handyman, not really one for the office uh, or to live in high towers and work on computers all day. Mike is an axe man, which is pretty decent for us. His accuracy with blades is already going to start pretty high, and his passive abilities and strength is going to be a bit higher than normal. And if he ever finds himself an axe, he can chop down trees a little faster. He loved the wilderness, and he was good at living in it. Uh, he also developed hypochondriac syndrome, but he is not all thumbs. Hard to be all thumbs when you live out in the wilderness and uh, deal with big objects, I guess. Uh, however, he is, an, other than a hypochondriac, a slow reader. He's not an astute man. He does not live uh, or never really lived in a world where reading was his thing. Like I said, he was much more of a handyman than anything else. But uh, that is for another time. We are going to be living here as Mike Garcia for as long as we possibly can. Uh, and we're not going to be playing in um, the standard difficulty. I've got a lot, a lot of people who have, have suggested the best way to play the game is custom sandbox and tailor it to kind of a more appropriate uh, theme for the undead. I guess that the default has sort of fallen to one of two get categories, either way too easy or way too hard. Uh, so I've looked at a, a lot of people's suggestions and I've kind of picked my own personal ones uh, that I really liked, and I've kind of hopefully set a difficulty that'll feel very much like uh, we're living in a post-apocalyptic undead scenario without being um, way too extreme in one direction or another. Not to say that uh, my death wasn't warranted, uh, Joy's death wasn't warranted more specifically because there were some bad decisions, hasty decisions made at the end here, but still, uh, it was kind of a good return to the game. It's been years since I've played, so clearly I'm going to be rusty. But here we have ourselves a new character to play with, uh, still running in the same uh, in lore, as it were, of Joy, being her ex-husband and all. Um, we've got a lot of food. I actually did set, since we are kind of running in the beginning of what you would consider the... Uh, the apocalypse to have most food and stuff be pretty abundant in the beginning or at the very least common i don't think i picked abundant i picked common um because it makes sense that that food wouldn't be common however uh the zombies have been tweaked and, and everything has been tweaked in some form or another and here we sit oh damn 
in the fir- our home street, Rosewood. Now, Mike Garcia has also been living amongst the undead for quite some time. Not quite sure, never was really a friendly person or one to make friends with his neighbors. Mike never really got close with those he lived close by, too. They were there, and they were, you know, uh, helpful and friendly enough, but never really friends. Uh, that was never really something he cared too much about. And so, taking on these homes and, and looting them for all they're worth, while there is a twinge of guilt, nothing nearly like how Joy would feel. Ooh. We've already got quite a lot of interesting loot here. Hammers and such are always welcome. Welding rods, hunter magazine. I genuinely don't know much about some of this stuff. Um, I'm sure this will be useful, but we can hear next door just the groaning and the thudding uh, of the zombies. Also, I have changed it so that zombies will set off house alarms. It doesn't make any sense, actually, that, that by default they do not. I did not know that's how it worked. Um, but that's apparently how it works. <laughs> there is, ooh, that, that's good for boredom. Ooh, a school bag. Yeah, let's equip this on our back. And a pistol. We'll immediately throw that into the bag real quick. I don't think we have any ammo for it, but it's good to have. I just didn't make any sense that zombies were not sending off alarms, and the only one who could set off an alarm was me. And that tactically is just a disadvantage, a disadvantage for us. An alarm clock as well. Let's go ahead and grab that. We were going to want to set that up next to whatever room we choose as our bed. Um, so if, if there are house alarms that are going to go off, the zombies should set them off without a problem. Honestly, this house right away is a very, very well-stocked house. Um, not overdoing it in the food. Not a lot of uh, good weapons. But, but... With two floors and a decent set of uh, starting items here that we can at least work through. Just kind of taking a quick look at everything. Yeah, there's no reason why we wouldn't we wouldn't try at the very least to set this up as our own. And maybe kind of make this a little bit more safe for us to travel around. So we're going to go ahead and add a sheet here in this hallway. There's also... Uh, a window here that leads into a secret room? What the f- Does anybody else see that window? There's a- That might be just the window down there in the shed. Wow. There are a lot of zombies over there. We may not be able to stay here now that I can see them all moving. And as Mike looks out the window, he can see a horde just meandering around. We'll still add a sheet. To, uh, to the windows and, and kind of just sort of treat this like we're going to stay here. He's bullheaded. Sticks to his guns. Doesn't really want to move if he doesn't have to. So he's not going to. And he's going to try and really kind of make everything as safe as he can in the area. Now, the downside of sheeting up so early is that we really can't get a good look. But it looks like for the most part, uh, yeah, they're all here. Yeah, they're just clown carnet carring it outside of that particular uh, spot. And that is uh, unfortunate. Okay, we actually got her in two stomps. That's uh, that's great. We, have, like, we can see the legs of a corpse lying down on the side of that house there. We can't really assume. Okay, so there is a house alarm there. And uh, that might be our sign to leave, unfortunately. Wow. Unfortunate. We'll keep an eye. Ooh. Let's pull away for a minute. Such a short range. Back up. Just trying to stomp him a little bit. Uh, we're definitely going to have to pull away here. We'll see how many end up filtering out this way. But I don't know if there's much we can really do. To try and take them out. In fact, kind of using the hammer as we are feels wasteful. So we're just going to immediately pull back to this little this little house here. Cut around the corner. I don't want to run too much. I think that was a big mistake I made uh, in the last go. Was just sprinting pretty much everywhere. We have no reason to do that. It exhausts us and it slows us down. But we're cutting around the trees and, and trying to play smart and use nature to his advantage. The one thing he's just known for so long... If we can lose them in the trees, 
we can get back here relatively safely. It looks like we did lose a majority of them. I'd rather the her be banging on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to clean the area out and we can see some wood from a destroyed door there. If we really can make this safer, we might have immediate valuable supplies to us that we can use. Come on, fall over. No? Maybe if I push her over? There we go. Uh, that we can immediately start boarding up with. That's something we haven't really been able to do, which is board uh, up. Let's turn off the outside light. I didn't know there was an outside light there. And let's grab this corpse. And let's kind of push it away. And drop it. It looks like we actually did lose them. Not a ton of zombies clumped up. And not a ton came wandering out. I bet you a lot of them got stuck in houses or on houses. Alright, that's fine. We knew she was going to be there. I'm just trying to push her. Alright, we've got a few more coming this way. At least two. I'd like to try and at least to take them out if possible. Yeah, here she comes. That's good. Come on. Yeah, over here. We got just the two. Just the two of us. A song that will never be played on the radio again. How sad. Come on. We got her. Mission accomplished. We got him. Good, good, good. Okay. Easy cleanup. Easy, easy cleanup. Let's go ahead and equip this hammer here, just in case. Another three or four that way, plus an untold amount wandering around just from the alarm going off. And a burnt down house right next door. He actually remembers it burning down. There were screams, panics, and then it was all cut. And within an hour, the house had caught fire. Not much you can do about it. Two zombies in there. And a garage that was luckily untouched. Let's just grab everything. Look how much faster I'm moving things. Holy crap. I did not realize... Um. All thumbs slowed things down that significantly. Oh, we're getting thirsty. We definitely need to make sure we've got water. I didn't even think about grabbing um, bottles and stuff. I immediately wanted to get out there and see what was in our vicinity. I'm not mad that I did because I think we, we absolutely needed to take care of uh, all of them as soon as possible. Especially with that many meandering around. Let's go ahead and grab this cooking pot. A couple of bowls. We'll fill everything up. I don't see any bottles. So I think we're just going to have to... I don't remember seeing any either. I think we're just going to have to fill up what we've got. I do wonder if we can set up a roasting pan. A timer. Ooh, and a mouse trap. I don't know how that works. But if we ever get like really pinched for food, we could always attempt to catch mouse... Uh... A mouse for food. We'll keep the kettle of water. The rest will just go into the refrigerator. Yeah, that's way faster. Even when the, the they're all full. That's great. And we need food. So let's go ahead and eat this peach. There's a lot of noise over here. And while that wouldn't necessarily bother me. Yeah, it's going to keep pulling... Uh, zombies out in my general direction and I I'm gonna have to keep dealing with them until the noise is dealt with now we could wait until they bust down the door on their own which genuinely may not be the worst call in the world but I'd rather kind of clear the area first it's actually kind of interesting for the first time maybe ever a house alarm has done us a favor I feel like it really kind of beckoned out all the zombies that had been in the uh, surrounding area. And then the constant noise of just banging on all these other doors seems to have caused them to separate into more manageable groups. Definitely a blessing in disguise. All right, don't sprint. I keep sprinting like that's something I should be doing and it's not. How do I get in here? 
Oh, like so. All right, let's, let's definitely pull these out. There we go. That actually worked very, very well. There's another zombie over there going towards my house. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit, make sure we're in good shape. God, seven stops total. He is so fast. He gets up incredibly fast. Dude, thank you. My God. Must have been a freshly turned one. Maybe even the one that was in that house. The one that burned it down. Maybe he was the one that had the screams going. Uh, we've got a hiking bag on him. That's supremely lucky. Let's go ahead and grab that. So we got a normal hiking bag right away. Let's go ahead and equip this as our secondary just to have it. And let's go make sure our house is clear. There was somebody wandering over there. I'm sure she got stuck. Yep, there she is. No, they're still banging on our... There's another one over there somewhere. We whiffed. Whoa, girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa. His heart leaps into his throat as this, as this female zombie wheels around the corner. Immediately trying to get to his jugular. A walkie-talkie I don't think does anything for us in our situ current situation. Um, if we were in multiplayer, it would. But right now, I don't think so. God, another one. Right. This hope. Is somebody inside? Oh, our back window got busted. Well, well, well. Now that does cause us issues. Okay. No issues that we can't manage, but issues nonetheless. We need to clean up. This is an extremely hot start for us. And uh, good old Mike Garcia had no idea he was surrounded by such dangers for so long. All right. Here's what I'm thinking. Seeing that broken window. Oh my God, they filed in. Okay, she was the one banging on the door. There doesn't seem to be anybody else banging on it. Let's clear the one in the back real quick. Let's actually open this up. My door is actually locked. <laughs> All right, let's 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 get her over here. And the plan is actually gonna go over here and grab that wood. We're gonna clear the glass of this uh, window first, and then we're going to board it up. That way they can't just climb through. I'm still convinced this is actually a fine place to set up. We've gotten lucky with the placements. Um, and a few good turn of, of uh, bouts of, of good luck and good events have, uh, really made sure we're going to have a good, strong start here. All on his mind now is just ensuring his safety and making sure that he can live in peace and operate from here for as long as he needs to. Again, he's a stubborn man. Where Joy might have been out with the, uh, the alarm going off, Mike fights. Not ready to give up. Whenever I hear that drum, like, doo -doo, I'm thinking we're about to get attacked, but never quite the case. Come on. Good. All right. Let's swing over. Let's just see if we can grab... A little bit of the wood here. There's still way more than I was expecting. Let's just grab one if we can. Nope. Push you over. Let's face the house while we do this so we can see the horde within our peripherals at all times. Let's just grab these planks. Even if we can just get one and run, we're good. But two, that's good. Now, I think construction will cause quite a bit of noise, but we'll see. I'll, I'll start constructing outside. I need nails, but I should have a couple. Let's go ahead and take out this. I actually have a box of nails, so let's go ahead and take the box out as well. Okay. Now, I don't think I can board with a box of nails. I think I have to empty it, but we'll try. 
wooden cross. Oh, kind of like graves. Okay. So I, can't, I don't have the option, so let's just open box of nails. We have a hundred nails here. Barricade. Now. Okay. That's good. Some zombie set off a fucking house alarm. Oh my god, man. Alright, let's see if we can get them away from here. We'll scream. And we'll do what we can to pull them away. I cannot believe someone triggered another house alarm. I actually made house alarms rarer, by the way. That was a major suggestion, was that their house alarms are way too common in the game. I don't have a house alarm, so I wouldn't know. I wonder if it's from there. All right, no sprinting. We don't need to sprint. We're good right now. Let's just kind of eke our way around the corner. We'll, we'll gather whoever we need to gather along the way. All right, we might want to sprint now. Let's push through. Oh, there's so many. I just want to take the long way around. Drag them as far in the opposite direction as I can. I'm going to need a sprint to break vision here. And I, I'm, as always, I'm mostly concerned with our area. That's our house. Okay. We've attracted- are you- there's another one. I literally made it rarer, and it seems to be just as common. <laughs> uh, that's frustrating. Okay, hang on. Just getting bad luck. But now they're gonna start swinging up this way. Because I think it's this- one of these two houses to our south. And even Mike is swearing under his breath at this point. Wouldn't you be? Okay. Stay down. Two at a time, stomping on one until she dies, hitting the other with a hammer until he kicks it. So much blood. The, the fence, the white picket fence is, is no longer white in that spot, but hey, it is what it is. Oh my god, two windows busted. Yep, we're in a bad spot. Yeah, hey buddy. Your windows, isn't that window already broken? Oh god. Oh god. I'm dead. I, I cannot believe it. Okay. <sighs> On the scratch, that that changes things drastically. We can't stay there. I didn't realize he wasn't going to fall over with a couple of pushes. And I didn't realize we had somebody crawling in from the back. That's okay, though. Let's see if we can get into this house here. And let's, uh, let's, let's just... Close the curtains. As always, Mike is, is stubborn. He's not leaving. But medical supplies are going to be very, very valuable to us right now. And we need to see if we have any. Yeah, we have a zombie in here, which is fine. Come on. Any bathroom zombies? No. Okay. Bottle of disinfectant. Cotton balls and sheets we can rip up. Perfect. Next, let's go ahead and uh, douse them in alcohol and then immediately disinfect. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Let's actually go ahead and, and uh, Judge, Judge Matt has his on. Oh, that's a, uh, that is a, uh, <laughs> That's a reference to me. 
That's fantastic. Uh, that's my Judge Mathis channel. If you don't know it, go check it out. Dean! Tell them all about it. Actually, don't. Link it. I don't know. Do something. Bandage! Adhesive bandages. Yes, please. Ripped rags, probably not nearly as good as an adhesive bandage. So, we're fine damage-wise. Well, other than that, zombie, I think we're clear. So let's just spend some time and see if our wounds heal or if we become a zombie within one episode. Well, it looks like the disease has not taken hold. We actually fully healed up, the bandages are good, and everything in general uh, ended up working out for us, luckily. Uh, we didn't. The scratch did not end up paying out in a, in a death and disease for us, thank goodness. However, it still was uh, a little dangerous, but this house is now clear. The house alarms have stopped. I actually did turn off the TV downstairs to make sure no noise was happening. And overall, this is still a pretty good house. It might even be the place we stay, though permanently I'm not entirely sure. Ooh, two school bags. I know that obviously Mike wants to go back to his home. That's where he wants to be. But he's also a smart man and he's a survivalist more than anything else. Living in, like I said, kind of throwing himself into nature more than anything. Let's get this body out of here. Um... So, with that, him being so stubborn, it's a difficult choice for him to whether uh, to, for whether or not he wants to uh, stay home or stay here. Though night is settling and things are going well, I kind of want to have Mike wander back over. I'm very curious how our house is doing. And there's a shed here, though I don't remember which way I'm supposed to be going to get back. Dusk is here, and I did kind of run a lot. Let's see if we can get this open. Let's go ahead and smash it. Remove the broken glass. Doesn't seem like anybody heard us. Before the night is through, I want to see if we can get lucky. I really was hoping we were going to find an axe. An axe would be a weapon that could go a long, long way for us. But no such luck. Not yet. On the outside, while I was healing, I did see a zombie or two wander into the street. I want to see if they're still there. If they are, I'd like to kill them. Yes, there they are. You, sir. Come here. Easy enough. Well, oh, there's the other one. Okay. I thought I had saw a couple on the street, but didn't know if the other one wandered away or not. Plenty of houses for us to loot here in Rosewood. A nice little quaint town. Not too many neighbors, so the zombies are manageable in number. Ooh, a digital watch. Grab that. Oh, I can see the time now. Oh, that's wonderful. 1130 at night. Well, 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 well. That should be it for our dear Mike Garcia. Running with death. Plenty of zombies, but alive nonetheless. His thoughts can't help but go to joy. Every once in a while he thinks of her. How she's doing. It's been months since he's even seen her. It's been months since he's even heard her voice. Even longer still since he's actually seen her. His final thoughts for this night are simple. I hope Joy's okay. When laying his head to rest in a strange house on a strange bed that still has the scent of those who owned it before lingering, the only word Mike can think of is hell. Rosewood has become hell. Not a kind soul in sight or a gentle hand to lend its assistance. He is truly alone now and would need to fight every second to stay alive. If that isn't hell, well, he doesn't know what is. Unfortunately for the walking dead out there, Mike knows hell better than the devil himself.